Hey, this is Kevin again with Custom Micro. Today is part four of our configuration guide of the FS S3410-48TS-P. We'll be covering port configurations. Let's do it. Now, the one thing we have not done is we have not configured the ports of the switch to use the different VLANs we have created. We want to go ahead and set what VLANs are untagged or tagged on the different interfaces of the switch. I'm going to go to trump port. I'm going to set the native VLAN to 10, which is our inside wired. I'm going to set the loud VLAN to 10 and 30. And then I'm going to select all of the ports. Then I'm going to deselect port 1, which I'm plugged into. I'm also going to deselect ports 49. 50, 47, and 48. You may wonder what's the purpose of what I'm doing. Well, basically, most devices that will plug into the switch will be your standard computer or printer. So they'll want to be on that inside wired VLAN, which is natively VLAN 10. That will be the untagged VLAN. But also, those ports could be used for voice over IP devices, which is VLAN 30. In those voice over IP phones, ATAs, etc., I can tag VLAN 30 in those devices, and so if a phone is plugged in, it will automatically hop onto VLAN 30. There are other ways that you can set up detection within the network switch. We covered that in our graphical user interface walkthrough on how you can put part of the MAC address, which is the manufacturer identifier in, and you can actually allow the switch to detect when a voice over IP device is plugged in and automatically set that port to be VLAN 30 untagged but in our scenario i'm more accustomed to tagging those ports in those voice over ip devices so i'm going to set the majority of the ports to be untagged on 10 and tagged on 30. so there we go you notice that that's done it's been configured now if we go back to vlan settings you'll notice that ports 2 through 46 are set up on VLAN 10 and VLAN 30. Now let's say in a scenario where we have two wireless access points, we want those to be untagged on 10 and we want to be tagged on 20 and 50, our inside wireless and our guest network. So we can come over and say trunk port. We're going to choose our native VLAN to still be 10, our allowed VLANs 20 and 50, and then we'll pick the two ports that our wireless access points are plugged into. Just for the sake of this scenario, I'm going to choose port 45 and 46 and click Save. The last VLAN settings we need to change is we need to untag VLAN 200 on one of our interfaces that we we'll use for our uplink to our firewall slash router. So we'll click Edit. This will just simply be an access port, not a trunk port. It just needs to be untagged on VLAN 200. And for our example, we're going to untag that on port 48. Remember this switch, the last two ports that are one gig are combo ports or dual personality ports. So keep in mind, if you plug something in to a one gig transceiver into port 48, you'll not be able to use the Ethernet port 48. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. That's a pretty good configuration there. So as we stop by and take a look at the two interfaces we configured for wireless access points, you notice the mode is trunk, the native or primary VLAN ID is 10. Oh, and then I notice an issue here. We should be allowing VLAN 10, 20, and 50, but for some reason it's only saying allowing VLAN 20 and 50, which means we could have a problem because we need to also allow VLAN 10, as you can see with the other interfaces we configured. So we need to go and fix that. So folks, I'm back and I realized my mistake. Earlier when we were setting up port 45 and 46 for wireless access points, I did set the native VLAN to 10, but on allowed VLANs, I should have said 10, 20, 50, and I only said 20, 50. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, take care of that on port 45 and 46, and click Save. Crisis averted. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can catch all the other parts of our configuration guide for this FS 
S3410-48TS-P network switch. Bye.